Hello everybody, Lewis with Tactical Response. Uh, we're making a video today. I just got this in from our friends at Galco. Uh, been looking to get into the shoulder holster game for a while. You may have seen our video from SHOT Show where I walked around with Mike and he kind of went through all of the different models that they offer because there are some different variations. Very good video if you're looking to select the shoulder holster for you. Shelton should probably put it up somewhere here, a tag for that video. He goes through the particulars and I realized I wanted a horizontal carry shoulder holster. I went with the Miami Classic 2 which has retention for the magazines, but without the flaps. So uh, Nate is wearing, I believe this is the Miami Classic original, and it does have the, the vertical magazines where my magazines will be horizontal. So Nate has quite a bit more experience with shoulder holsters, so he's gonna help me get mine fitted to me and walk me through that process. And by quite a bit more, you mean I've done this one time before. I've, I've heard you've done it at least two times, adjusting oh, and installing uh, all this stuff. I was lying, but. I, I did see, <laughs> I saw a YouTube video on it, so I'm pretty much ready to go. All right, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's see what we can do here. Mike does have a great installation video and, and goes over the sizing on the Galco website as well. So you do have that as a resource. So inside the box, we have our harness, our holster, and the mag carrier, as well as some fastener buttons that'll hold this in place once we get the right amount. Now there's, uh, you can see at the bottom, I'm not wearing it with this one, but you can actually attach it to, there's like a piece that you can get to attach it to your belt, keep it more in place. Hmm. All right, so this stuff, Shelton, might need to be cut. Do you wanna look at mine to see how it goes? Yep, through? I think this is gonna go through here. We're gonna pull a bit of it. Through, right yep. that's gonna Here. come back up and in Boom. I'm guessing these straps right the tail end is gonna go to the inside so we have one strap coming down mm -hmm. man the, like you can just feel the quality of the leather and basically everything Galco it has that new car smell yeah, it's pretty nice. Right. If I remember the first time I did it, I was like afraid to trim the, the ends mm -hmm. on it. I was also a little bit underweight and so kind of nerdy like I, I taped it. I mean, of course, it was going to be under a jacket, but mm -hmm. you don't have to commit to cutting anything right away. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it would be, it'd be a shame to cut some of this stuff because you never know somebody else may need to borrow your gear might want to take a class wearing it and ask you to borrow it and it'd be nice to be able to lend it out to them yeah speaking of class the reason we're in the classroom today is they just finished up day one of the fight and for those of you that aren't aware the fight is tactical responses force on force class it's mm -hmm. pretty cool and some people, maybe you have a shoulder holster and you haven't really had an opportunity to practice with it a lot. Maybe you've mm -hmm. practiced drawing, right? But <clears throat> if you've ever watched, you know, one of the things Jaeger taught us is the way you, you draw, you don't want to muzzle yourself mm -hmm. just like you would with a, a holster draw. But as you can see, uh, this is your brachial artery yep. is right here. Or let's say we're in a live fire class you know, if I were to draw, so what you want to do is clear it with your arm, right? Open it and boom, so I don't cover my own body. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, if this was a real gun, right, I'd be flagging the guy next to me on the line. And I'd be all like, <clears throat> hey man, same team. Right. 
So at that point, you're kind of limited to one shoulder holster, maybe like a right-handed guy all the way on this side of the line and a left-handed mm -hmm. guy, right? Whereas in if you if you want to run it and experiment mm -hmm. with it, you can come take the, you know, we've got Glock 17 trainers, but you can come run that holster in the fight, It'll give you plenty of opportunity to practice drawing it under stress in different scenarios, working on your reloads, right? I come out like this. Oh, see, oh man, I got it the wrong way. So turn that around, good training, mm -hmm. fresh magazine first, seat, racket. I'm getting carried away. Hey, I'm just pretty impressed. Like, out of all things, that round came down and landed directly on the microphone. That was pretty cool. Um, well, I hit something with it. Yeah, anyway. yeah. So, all right. Well, like like you said though, it it is big. Even if you could draw from a shoulder holster in every training class you take, doing it under stress is a different thing. I can't tell you how many times I've seen back there where someone goes to clear a cover garment with one hand and gets themselves some of this going on. Mm -hmm. And then they get it drawn out and are about this far. And it's like, do I drop the gun? Do I just shoot them from here now? So running stuff under stress in force on force classes is really the proving ground. Yeah. So definitely a great point. All right, well, let's see. Where are let's, we at on this? Let's see. I, I think we should put the gun in before I put it on because Galco's stuff, when it's new, comes very tight. I know that from my ankle glove. Mm -hmm. So I, right. know, I know it's going to be a tight fit. This, so Nate's one of, one of the people who, who will understand this. Uh, it's getting cold out. And James always said fall was shoulder holster season because he'd be wearing coats and be able to wear his shoulder holster. And it was kind of something he looked forward to. So I, I think it's really cool that I'm finally getting into the shoulder holster game this fall. And this M&P is one that James gave me that he carried. Um, so... SHS, not PSL. See, I was never in the Navy, so I don't even know what the acronyms. You don't know PSL? No. Shoulder holster season, SHS. Oh, shoulder holster season. PSL, pumpkin spice latte. Mm, yeah, I don't hang out with that many basic white bitches, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's got me beat on that experience as well. So I think that goes something like this. All right. Yeah, yeah. And this we'll get them guns through here. Help me get, get dressed a little bit. All right. I'm gonna throw two mags of the best ammo made. Defiant munitions. Go ahead, use code Jaeger23 at defiantmunitions.com for 10% off the best defense ammo you could pro possibly buy. So again, I, you see I had to flip those magazines because I'm thinking about it, which way am I gonna reload? And that's something I think might be an advantage of this over the vertical mag mm -hmm. is I'm reaching back here and naturally indexing the front of the magazine. Okay, now what about, is it right? gonna be the same for the second mag? So with the second mag, I was kind of game planning this. I'm thinking this finger is going to go in here to grab that second one. And the retention, again, on new Galco stuff is tight, but I'm not going to loosen these screws at all yet until I get some break in on the leather. Um, you look refined. How, how does it look? from the back in terms of how much barrel am I printing out versus so, out the so front. So if we look out the front, okay. So we're good in the back. Oh, man, I almost think that we could rock this thing back just a little bit okay. more. Because so. if you look at it from the profile, like say you cover, mm -hmm. maybe like um, a plaid shirt might be good, but like if you ever put a suit mm -hmm. coat on, you'll definitely see a little bit of a bulk there. So I'm thinking about there. Mm -hmm. I can still comfortably grab it. 
well, you how would that tight, look? You yeah, this if up you want to take up the slack for me. So doing this with a second person that can help you out and give honest feedback on things is obviously a big help. Otherwise, I would be taking this all off again. Try that. Yeah. So now I'm in that spot. I think that's comfortable. It's a good starting spot. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think, no, nope, I think if I go any higher, my, my gi gigantic lats are just going to make it a nightmare. Yeah. I think that's very comfortable for this. I'm thinking maybe a little higher for this, or maybe, how is it, does it seem like it's hanging vertically for me, Nate? It does. That looks like it's perfectly hidden, but... Maybe one notch up on each side. For some reason, it feels low. Okay. It feels like it could come up some. All right, here we go. And I am going to be putting a handcuff holder on underneath the magazines as well. Um, man, that actually feels like it kind of did it right there. I can bring the front up. Try it now before I tighten up the front. Hmm. As long as you don't think it's going to print too much out the back. Because, again, something... What are you, what are you wearing to cover? Something like a this, maybe? A oh. light... <clears throat> so this is a light fleece that I have. Well, a little something, something. So if I were wearing this, does that... I mean, it's black, so it's going to conceal pretty well. Okay, there's a little bulge, but only because I know what it is. Mm -hmm. Around the backside. Yeah. And again, target glances, I can feel better from the front. So if I were going to err on one way or the other, I'd rather print more out front. front rather than have someone behind me who's eyeing me up. It does print more in the back. Yeah. You want to try and rock lift that forward Lift some? the front up a little. Yeah. Along with it. Oh. You just spilled all the force on force pens. Mm-hmm. Okay. That brings... Okay, that's brought it back in. How's that feel? It feels good. It's right there. It's on the lat. I think it gives me a little bit of standoff from the belt, so I'm not bumping into stuff or having it feel weird. I was weird with my ankle holster. Mm -hmm. I really didn't like it to touch the top of my shoe, and I have some weird stuff like that. But this feels like comfortable setup. What at, about at the, least enough? Does to the pistol feel too low, or like it, do this and? you want to try higher or yeah I think if we can get it up maybe a little bit like right right about there I think I'm still in still the neighborhood good. of of where it should be hold it in place yeah and now wait hold on I just noticed something Nate mm -hmm. or maybe it's because of the way I was holding my arms this thing, I got to try and pin equally, right? <clears throat> I want that to what, be a center. If I recall correctly, I don't think it needs to be centered. No? It just needs it'll, to feel good. It'll just drive me wild. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do that and see if... All right, let's, let's see here. Maybe if we could get the pistol locked in right there. I know in Mike's video on the Galco website, he talks about not wanting to have it too tight mm -hmm. and like chicken winging yourself or like yep. being, it's not supposed to be a posture corrector, <laughs> <laughs> right? And that'll make getting in and out of it a little bit tougher as well. You can explain the... Uh... <laughs> so we've got these phone cases from Magpul that we fill with polymer uh, 
some type of epoxy in here. So they replicate a phone for our force on four scenarios. These are great because like you can see Nate's force on force gun is blue. This is blue. Out in the wild, guns are black and phones are black. So there are some interesting times when someone takes a phone out of their pocket and it gets perceived as a gun, interesting things happen. Uh, I mean, it happens out in, in the real world as well, but just, just something very cool that, that we've done in our Force on Force classes to match those things up and add a little bit more realism. Yep, and I like it because usually in a Force on Force scenario or a lethal encounter, scenario you might eventually want to grab your phone and make a phone call and so when we train you know it's it's always nice to break the trainer as you can see <laughs> this phone is actually probably less cracked than some of your phones unless yeah. unless you're really old school yeah bam these things never break and literally this thing has been dropped on concrete i can't tell you how many times and it's still a legit nokia all right. Well, I think I think we got you to a good place to at least start with. Right. And then, like, so turn around. So obviously, I've got we've got a bag of these, which you'll be able to sort out to to lock it in place. But I've I've tucked the extra in here, and if he wanted to, he could take some electrical or some gaffer tape and just kind of tape it in place until he gets to the point where maybe you know if he ever wants to trim it, but. Yeah, I like, I really like the spot of the gun right now. It's obviously going to be something to get used to because, I mean, huge, huge lats, gigantic triceps. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's something under my arms or between my arms and me right now. So it will take some walking around. Like anything else, the first time I strapped a gun on my belt and put it in my pants, it felt weird. weird for a few weeks and, and this is a perfect holster if you've got ILS as well what's that acronym invisible lat syndrome mm. yeah <laughs> we all know that guy that's got ILS he needs a Galco holster yeah it helps conceal so big thank you to Galco big thank you to Mike over there now Joey Myself, Tim, Nate, all rock shoulder holsters. So it, it's, it's something old that's becoming something new for some of us. Yep, so if you're, if you're rocking a double stack Glock and you also have a, a shoulder holster, or you're thinking about mm -hmm. it, bring that shoulder holster to the fight, put a trainer in there, a blue gun, and uh, come take test it out with the force on four scenarios because remember your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends